So, bienvenidos, ni hao, bonjour, hola, bele, yo, what's up y'all and welcome to today's session, session, session of what the F is an NFT. Uh, it's presented by music.com and in partnership with the system and the NFT lab. And I'm your host. You can find me everywhere at Keone Chong or at Keone. Uh, and I run the NFT lab where we do research, innovation, and development for creators, innovators, operators, and builders in the NFT space. Uh, we've got a new cohort that's kicking off on April 26th. Um, I'd love for you guys to join us if you guys are interested um, in, in taking this to the next level. So yeah, let's keep it going. So let's talk today about a little bit, well, let's dive into today's agenda. Um, we're going to do a drop in, which is sort of how we keep the community vibes high and we want to make sure that we check in with you and uh, meet you guys where you guys are at. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about how NFTs work for artists and fans. Um, I'm going to share a few of my favorite projects. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A session for a little bit and then we'll talk about next steps. So. Today's drop-in is as follows. It's your name, it's your location, what do you do, and why are you here today? And uh, I'll mirror that. Uh, my name is Keone, and I am in sunny downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I'm a cultural strategist, um, and I focus mostly on Web3. So I focus on NFTs and a little bit of DAO and DAO governance work. Uh, why am I here today? I'm here to help onboard the next generation of creatives and their fans into the space. Um, and I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, go ahead, drop it into the chat. Um, we've got Jose, Jose Caballero, who's in downtown LA as well. He's a Web3 community builder and product Sherpa. And he's a producing behind the scenes in Samurai mode. We've got Mirna. And Mirna is, uh, she's Venezuelan and she's in Chile. She's an illustrator and an architect. Glad to have you here. We've got Stacy in Tampa, Florida. She's a brand strategist and marketing consultant. And she's interested in hearing what kinds of businesses might utilize NFTs. Uh, we've got Cheese, who's in Tucson, in Arizona. And he's a vibe manager and artist liaison. And he's here for the community vibes. Uh, we've got Ryan Hale, who's in Raleigh, North Carolina, digital marketer. Uh, we got Vinny from Rio de Janeiro, oh yeah, in Brazil, and he's a product and a product manager. We've got Jason Perrier, uh, he's just outside of Toronto, he's a podcast editor and live stream producer, and he's here because he wants to learn more about NFTs and what they can do for his clientele. We've got Wilkes from Newport News. VA, artist and producer, here from the knowledge and NFTs and how it can benefit. Awesome. Jay in the UK, he's a brand strategist and designer and wants to learn more about NFTs as he knows nothing. Well, I guarantee after today's session, you will absolutely know something. <laughs> We've got George, lead guitarist with LA based, with an LA based jam band, Sanford Street, rad. <laughs> We've got Roberto Puente, the homie, Venezuelan in Barcelona, and he's helping creators monetize and he's here to help learn and support. Uh, we've got Luis, Luis from Phoenix, Arizona, software architect, learning about NFTs and how to help get some musician friends into the game, rad. We've got Albert from SoCal in sales and marketing and he's a musician as well. We've got Christina, who's in Ontario, Canada, Canada, uh, graphic designer and illustrator, and here to learn about NFTs and to celebrate her birthday. We've got Chad, who's in Dallas, Texas, brand marketing and how to help musicians build new connections with fans. We'll definitely talk about that. Iwana from Brasov, Romania, and she catalyzed brands um, and helps them in regenerative practices meet Web3. Uh, and she's here to support the community and the system and to do some humble bragging right on. Jennifer Precious Finch, and she's a musician, photographer, creative director for Weekly World News in Los Angeles. Well, we're in, I'm in LA, so, you know, reach out. Um, yeah, we've got Apu Gomez, who's another photographer, 
based out here in uh, Southern California. We have Belin Vallejo in Fort Worth, Texas, web strategist, developer, and wants to teach artists about NFTs and how to leverage their gifts. Wonderful. We've got Leaf from New York here to learn about NFTs. We've got Alex. We've got Joanna from Rio de Janeiro, and she's a business analyst learning more about this new world of Web3. We've got Alex London, who's an NFT photographer trying to get an idea of how to market myself for NFT photography. We can talk a little bit about that for sure. Uh, Billy, D D D Billy Dutton, an ice cream eater <laughs> is the first uh, time we ever had that title. That is awesome. Um, Apu, based in Venice, you talked a little bit about him earlier, interested in NFTs and et cetera. Yeah, and we'll do one more. We've got Chris Brennan uh, from Santa Monica, and he's a global artist and labels relation lead who connects artists and label communities to the Web3 platform, as well as drive promotional and marketing opportunities for artist projects. Interesting. Well, I hope you guys get a lot about from today's session. So let's dive in. So first and foremost, and if we can get the link in the chat, uh, here's a real quick one sheet uh, about NFTs. So if you're just looking at some of the basics and you just want it on one sheet, um, we've got that for you. So, um, you know, got a little bit of background. Let's dive into today's sesh. All right. So if you're here and you're watching this, you're probably an artist or a band member, or fan, um, musician predominantly. Um, but I'm here to tell you what NFTs are and to reassure you that they're not a fan. Uh, so let's dive into it. So a lot of hoopla recently in the news, you know, um, Binance just launched their platform. Um, we're looking at all of the money that is flowing into this marketplace. And we're looking at all of these articles about how they are fundamentally revolutionizing the creative industry and the music industry. And, um, you know, there's a lot of FUD out there. FUD is a Web3 term that stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And there's a lot that are saying that this is a fad or that this is a trend. Uh, I'm here to assure you that this is not. This is the next, next epic or epoch in technology. Like, this is the next level. We went from, you know, Web1, where there were just simple websites and uh, simple platforms to content um, with YouTube and Twitter and the like. Um, then we had evolution into access, you know, around, you know, the content that we love to listen to. So you had Spotify and you had the sound clouds out there. Um, but Web3 is a fundamental evolution of that space. Um, NFTs are driving the revolution. And NFTs, um, what they stand for is non-fungible token. So what this means is that what you own is outright, it is original, and it has special value. Um, they're not just the art, but they're also verified ownership. And uh, NFTs have an agreement and a payment built inside. So this is proof that the art is real and that you are the owner. So NFTs, what are they? This is why I say they're the next technological, next technological epic, meaning uh, they're a core blockchain technology. So they'll only work on blockchains. And like I said, you know, Facebook or Apple Music or Spotify, they don't work on those platforms um, because ownership is key in an NFT. Um, in the past, we had to stream access to content. Um, but now we get to own it and we get to own it in the same ways that we used to own vinyl or we used to own cassettes or the way that we used to own VHS tapes. So uh, it's important that I reference those things for a number of reasons. A, they are fundamental in that they cannot be changed. You know, once you create an NFT, they exist forever. And they exist forever in a way that was different than prior Web2 um, spaces and that they can be exchanged, they can be sold, they can be transferred. Um, and that's something that's super new and, and very different. 
Um, this is why we are seeing this proliferation of marketplaces. And that's because art for the first time ever can be owned. It can be attributed, meaning the proof that you are the original owner is something that we've never had before. Uh, NFTs are a fundamental game changer. And uh, they're a fundamental game changer because never before in history have creatives uh, or fans had the monetization and the distribution directly in the hands of the artists. And it allows for those that hold NFTs that have acquired NFTs to keep a majority of the profits. In the past in Web2, all of the profits, all of that value went to the platforms, to who owned Spotify, right? And what have we learned from that? That it makes it very, very difficult for artists to live off of these platforms. It makes it hard to live off of stream. It makes it hard for a photographer to showcase his artwork and live off of the attention behind, you know, their work. You know, we had to sell ourselves, our souls, our personalities, our identities for likes, for retweets, right? For what? So that we could build attention. So hopefully that we could get some sort of value behind our art. Um, but now NFTs fundamentally change that in that you now have a direct relationship between the people that make the art and the people who listen to it, right? So uh, here's why it matters to you as a fan and as an artist. And I know that we have a few photographers in the building and the principles are just the same. Um, you know, for artists, it allows for you to fund equipment, to fund the projects like your music videos, to book studio time. Uh, you can use NFTs to provide unique access to your shows. Um, you can use it to sell the smaller components of a project, singles, stories or videos, all kinds of creative expressions around the art. Uh, it allows for you to collaborate with other artists in more equitable ways, right? They use this tool called a smart contract. Basically, it's an agreement that says, hey, you will always get a percentage of this art no matter what it does, no matter what influence it has. That's something that collaborators have never had before. Uh, you can use NFTs to fund equipment purchases, uh, you know, buy that tour bus that you have always been looking at. Um, and then most importantly, you can really use it to host private listening parties, private listening experiences, giving access to your fans who invest in supporting your art and give them really unique abilities to experience the creation of it. Um, super, super awesome. Now for fans, it kind of works in an opposite way, right? Uh, you can help fund the artist's creative activities and their creative endeavors but it's different than just funding them. You're investing in them. Uh, being able to purchase an NFT, the value of the artist as it rises, guess what happens? The value of your NFT rises as well. So the ability to really support your artist in a way that's organic, right? That will honor those that have been early supporters in the space. Um, and then there are special perks that come with a lot of these uh, NFTs, things like guest lists for life, um, access to, again, right, the single, the singles and the stories and the videos, all of the creative expressions that revolve around the art that typically weren't accessible. Um, it allows for you to have special access to the artist. Um, it will be available to collaborate with the artist. Um, and again, right, you're able to join in on these really unique um, uh, listening experiences, hang out backstage, you know, and vibe with your artists, you know, hang out in a, in a studio session. Uh, if you're a photographer, go location hunting with your fans, right? Uh, these are really powerful ways in, uh, that you can bring in your community and your supporters into your expressions as an artist. So I want to talk about a few of my favorite artists and a couple of really powerful case studies to hopefully inspire you on your journey into NFTs. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Latasha. Uh, if you don't know Latasha, you need to check her out. She is an incredible musician. 
Um, she has been paving the way for artists in the space, and she's been leading a lot of innovation. Um, I want to talk about one of her projects, which is a music video. And uh, Jose, if you want to, you know, let it play for a little bit and give you a vibe of what's going on. So this music video sold for over $30,000. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little loud. Apologies. It's a little loud. Yeah. But let's just do it on mute. Yeah. Um, here's what was really phenomenal about this project. Um, she put it together over a weekend. Um, all of the collaborators on the project, they all have percentages in the project as it's sold. So the video the videographer, the stylist, the producer, everyone that was involved in this project got a percentage of what the project sold for. And this is a great example of how just a side gig, you know, a side music video could provide incredible value for an artist. Um, one of the things that I think is really remarkable about this project is this isn't even the most that her project has sold for. Um, she sold another music video for 50K, which is incredible. And uh, I think it goes to show the power of building a community in this space. And this is really just a reflection of the song. This isn't even the music itself. Uh, so this is a great example of how, you know, your, your adjacent work can still provide tons of value for you as an artist. So please go check out Latasha if you can. At Call me Latasha uh, on Twitter. Um, she's also on Instagram. Um, and this particular project was launched on Zora, the Zora platform, which does uh, lazy minting. So that means that you could have minted a project on this platform for no cost. So let's check out the next case study. So Snoop Dogg, I'm sure we're all familiar with Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg introduced me to rap as a first generation Jamaican growing up out here in LA. Um, but uh, what I think is really phenomenal about this drop is how he launched it and who he launched it with. So he launched it with a couple other my homies, Black Dave, and um, also launched it with uh, my boy Dame Funk, representing Pasadena. Uh, and so basically what he did is he put together a mixtape. It was about 40 minutes long uh, and he launched it on SoundCloud. Now, what is powerful about the launch is what it made in a matter of three minutes, four minutes, 300K plus. He, he launched it on Sound XYZ and Open and OpenSea. Mm -hmm. So OpenSea is a marketplace where um, once NFTs are minted, uh, it's called what is it's called a secondary market, meaning after you acquire the NFT from the artist, you then have the option to sell or resell it. So when the project first launched, it was at 0.1 ETH, which was about $300. As you can see, the lowest that you can get it for now is 0.9 ETH nine times the value radio station xyz sn for Sorry. this project no good should should we listen to it for a little bit yeah let's see if we can hear double, double op, OP. Volume, volume two baby, baby. let's go now look, now look here now look here i wasn't gonna do it at first i wasn't even gonna come to the metaverse but I mean, but I mean, I'm going ape shit crazy. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. One, two, three, four, please turn the beat on. Baseline so fine, young nigga spit it. Turn to. Yeah, so um, definitely a rad song. Uh, my boy Black Dave's verse. If you're a Naruto fan, you're going to catch all the vibes. Um, Again, right, another example of launching a music project. And again, this isn't an album, right? Um, if you guys want to talk to me later on, I can show you guys about projects that have full on album concepts that have done incredible. Blau launched a music project last year that sold for 11 million. 
So the capacity to make real wealth that is owned by the artist, not the distributor, not you know your your label, um, but by the artist and by the fan is incredible. And then let's jump into our last case study. So this case study is for the art. Don't Sleep Music Collective, and it is Jazz is Dead uh, concert season pass. So this is an example of ticketing, right? And so basically what they did is they launched an NFT and they launched it on the Cardano, Cardano, excuse me, blockchain. And that NFT will give you access to their entire uh, series performance, uh, which is called Jazz is Dead. So for the entire season, you have access because of this NFT and these different tiers of NFTs gives you different tiers of access. Some of them will allow for you to get raffles of vinyl of uh, performances from artists, uh, merchandise from them. Uh, some will allow for you to have VIP access and hang out backstage, right? So there are different tiers of access that are embedded into the agreements of an NFT. Um, and they are one of the first to do so. And again, they're local right here in Los Angeles. So if you're in LA, let's go check out a Jazz is Dead uh, concert. Um, but yeah, these are three case studies, really interesting case studies of the different kinds of access and the different kinds of expressions as a creative that you can use uh, to, to build community and generational wealth using NFTs. So um, what I'd love to do is open the floor up a little bit and spend about 10 minutes, 15 minutes uh, for some Q&A. Um, I know I covered a lot and hopefully I didn't cover it too quickly, um, but I'd love to hear some of your thoughts and questions around NFTs, um, you know, what this sounds like for you or what the meaning uh, of this uh, new technology era, how it can change your creative. And uh, the chat is open now. Dive in and I'll dive in and uh, answer your queries. So why am I excited about NFTs? Yes, well, so let's talk a little bit about this. All of these artists have good followings. Many do not. So some of the artists that were featured on Snoop Dogg's, they have maybe a following of 5,000 or 6,000 on Instagram or Twitter. And it was important that I showcase some of these artists because in the space, it's not necessarily followings that determine how successful you are. In this space of Web3, uh, reputation is important as fans. And so that means that what they sell generally is reflective of how they participate within their community how they provide value to the community and how they engage. Um, Black Dave, for example, he is on Twitter every day. He's probably in a Twitter space every other day. Um, and he's engaging with the community. He is onboarding his fans. And so, uh, yes, do some of these artists that have large following, are they able to find a lot of success in this space? For sure. But one of the one of the trends between some of these artists that have done, you know, $300,000 sales like Snoop Dogg is they are constantly engaging with their community and they're always giving back value and they're always participating. So there are opportunities for you as a small independent artist to get into the space, to build community, uh, to get involved in a way where you can find success. And it doesn't mean that you need to sell your first video, music video for $50,000. You can sell your first music video for $500, right? And as you build value and equity and reputation in the space, those older projects will appreciate in value because now you're starting to build a story, right? I think it's important for many artists to understand that in this space, it's like a reset, right? Very, very many artists that have found success in traditional means that doesn't work the same way in Web3. 
And so you get to enter at the same level that most of these artists that were huge right next to you are, you know, were in the space. So, um, Alessandro, that was a great point. And um, yeah. So how do smaller artists get featured? Well, the first step is to have an identity in the space, right? It could mean buying a .eth, which is like buying your name and your title tied to Ethereum. Um, it can be setting up a Discord and jumping into communities. Um, I mentor and consult with a few artists in the space. And my number one thing that I recommend is to get involved in the conversations. So find the communities uh, that share the same values that you have. If you're into hip hop, there are hip hop communities that are having conversations daily. There are discords around hip hop. Dive into those spaces. Uh, every single music platform that I covered, we covered Zora, we covered OpenSea. Well, we did cover OpenSea. Um, we covered sound.xyz. Uh, these platforms have discords that you can enter into. So there are communities that are already there for you to engage in. The responsibility, though, is always going to fall to the artist. Are you willing to take the time to build the relationships? And not only the relationships with artists are fans that you already have and helping them understand what's happening in Web3, but also engaging these communities that already exist in Web3 and introducing yourself. These collectors are looking for new artists. And the way that I like to look at the metaverse is it's an entire universe that has been yet to be filled with culture. What is that culture going to be? It's going to be you. It's going to be the artists. It's going to be the NFTs. That is what is going to populate this space. So if you're worried that you're late, if you're worried that there's all of these other folks that are making noise and you're not making noise, don't be dissuaded. It is still very, very early. We are still in the alpha stages. So as a brand strategist, how can you create an NFT and what can you offer? Is it really only for artists and musicians? No, there are many different ways that you can offer your skills. Um, service as an NFT is an example. So NFT, uh, Black Dave did service as an NFT. And what he did is he said, I will drop a verse on your song for this NFT, right? It is his service and it is tied to an NFT. As a brand strategist, you could say, hey, I only have 15 brand strategy engagements that I'm going to take this year. That's it. You can buy my time now through an NFT and that will guarantee that I will work on your project this year. All right. Hania, she doesn't understand how people pay so much. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about how NFTs are valued. NFTs are valued in a bunch of different levels. And Jose, can you give me the next song, please? Uh, so, yeah. so uh, how do people pay so much? So NFTs function on the basic principle of supply and demand, fundamentally from an economic standpoint. So what that means is the less that there are and the more people that want them, the more valuable they will naturally become. And that's okay. And Jose, can you drop it maybe 5%, 7%? Thank you. Um, but NFTs are not just valued economically, they're also valued for the artwork. So very, like for example, there were only 1,000 of Snoop Dogg's songs that are available, only 1,000. And they come with perks. If you hold this song, that means the next song that he releases, you have an opportunity to buy early before the general public gets, right? So there are layers of not just the art itself, so that's the cultural layer, but then you have an economic layer, and then you have a, uh, a supply layer, right? And so this is how all of these projects can become so uh, expensive or so valuable. Yeah, there's a there's an interesting question. So so I, the economic level, the other thing that I that I dropped into the chat was, mm -hmm. you know, art in general when it comes to markets, uh, 
it's it's valued very differently than commodities and products and services. People are buying mm -hmm. it not as a necessity; they're buying it as a right. uh, purchase that they can. So people can pay twenty thousand dollars for the mm -hmm. NFT uh, again because they're holding uh, uh, quantities of crypto that are fairly large. Uh, and and um, in any art uh, business, for I think I think that that NFTs and Web three not only it, it, it can elevate an artist. Uh, from the traditional like hustling because they have to get streams or they have to book concerts and and gigs to making their work transcend uh, those kind of moments in time to becoming like objects uh, in 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 the historical sense uh, and you know Snoop did it super well you know he's not an unknown artist but Latasha is not a big artist right. She, she, she's been big in Web3 and a lot of the artists that have come in early into Web3 have done a really great job at like just basically becoming native. So sorry, uh, that's uh, I'm, I'm producing, not answering questions. There's a question is min, uh, in the Q&A, uh, in the Q in the questions, uh, is minting and selling NFTs hard? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Minting and selling NFTs are not hard. It's actually, it's easy. If you have the artwork already created, and I talked about this concept of lazy minting, basically what that means is the platform will cover the costs to mint your project. So minting, anytime you create something on the blockchain, there is a cost to it. Um, it's because you're embedding this data into the chain, right? Into this network. And that is expensive. Um, in the past, when we were uploading you know, things to YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, et cetera, in the Web2 era, the platform took on that cost, but they also took on all the value of that, that content. Now in this space, guess what? We as the creators, we have to take on that cost for storage, for maintenance behind that content. Um, but we can have that embedded into the price of what our art is going for, by using some of these platforms that offer lazy minting. And I suggested OpenSea, uh, Zora, Sound.xyz, uh, Sound um, Catalog is another great example of that. Foundation, um, One Of, which is a music platform that is coming out. Rarible, which is a great platform for all kinds of different media types, particularly photography. So yeah. Um, Let's see, uh, what are some of these questions? The idea of gaming, right? And collaborative effort, music, graphic, and photography with game developers. I'm not really sure what the question is, but I can talk really quickly about gaming in the space. So gaming in the space, uh, a great example is Axie Infinity. Uh, Loot Crate is another great example. Uh, so the basic principle is you can buy your character and your character will come with particular attributes. And then you can bring that character into the game. And so this character you own and all of the activities that happen within the game, this character can then earn value behind that. Um, Axie Infinity was really innovative in that they brought the opportunity for you to match characters that you had two or three different characters and they can create an entirely new character altogether. So you have the ability based on having two characters to create multiple characters and to build all of these really interesting uh, new features and experiences based on your ownership. Hmm, and let's see, how do I feel about the scarcity and FOMO aspect of NFTs? So here's what I like to make the comparison to. If you're walking down the street and you see somebody driving by in a Ferrari or you see someone in a, you know, rocking a fit that you think is dope. Do you be like, oh my gosh, I need to go get that Ferrari right now. Or I need to get that dress right now. This is a universe where there is going to be an unlimited amount of unique and powerful creative. And it's okay if you don't own it. It's okay if you're not a part of that community. Um, because it's so new and novel, we are we haven't yet become accustomed with the concept that there's going to always be an unlimited amount of incredible 
artistic expression and fashion and technology that we want. And so because it's so new to us, we have this FOMO because you're like, oh my gosh, I saw that and I missed that on it. I think we will get to a point in a few years, hopefully, where we understand that is a really great project. It's not for me. I don't need to have it. This space, we are going to be inundated, right? We're looking at an empty universe right now, but that universe is eventually going to be filled with the likes of you, all of the creators in the room, all the operators, all the strategists. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. Um, let's see what else we've got. Utility experiences attached to NFT from an artist perspective. From an artist perspective, how is that managed to ensure that the fan is always guaranteed backstage access, etc.? From a fan perspective, how is that tracked and managed when the NFT is sold or transferred over time? So NFTs, and this actually ties into another question that was earlier about smart contracts. So NFTs verify ownership through your wallet, right? Um, wallets are the gateway to being able to be present in the space, to participate in this space, to build content in this space, um, because a wallet is your central source of ID and it is your central source of validation. Wallets are important because the way that they are designed, only the individual that owns the wallet can have the access, can own things in the wallet and can transact from the wallet. And so wallets are the way that we validate what somebody has as an NFT and whether or not that NFT has the particular uh, feature sets. So there are different tools, if you're talking about from an operator's perspective, that can help validate that for you. Um, I've got my buddy, um, he runs a program called Campus. Uh, I just hung out with him last week, two weeks ago in Long Beach. He manages the backend infrastructure for the Board Ape Yacht Club restaurant board in Hungary. Um, and he built a platform that allows for you to manage and track, you know, NFTs and who owns them and what kinds of experiences that you can have. Um, let's see, it sounds scary. Where does it, where do you begin if it's for me and your brand plan? So yes, this is a unique space. There is all kinds of kookiness going on in this space. Um, but there's also all kinds of incredible community and opportunity that's happening. Um, I suggest finding a community that you can trust and getting involved and start to have conversations. Um, look at maybe some of the marketplaces that, that are interesting to you that reflect uh, the art that's powerful. Uh, look at folks that are exploring the NFT and doing NFT education. The MDC Discord is an incredible place if you're a musician and you're looking to get into the space. Um, very powerful stuff. Um, from Vinny, is the actual art stored in the blockchain or do we have verified or trusted validators that say, yes, this is the NFT in reference to the song and image? So yes, the actual art is embedded in the blockchain. There is something that is called an IPFS, and this is very technical. Um, but it's called the interplanetary file system. And that is where the content for your NFT is stored. So when your NFT comes up, right, your wallet, what it is doing is it is referencing a block. That's what we call it the blockchain because there are blocks of information stored together. It is referencing the block that has the data stored in it. Now there are new NFTs that are dynamic that allow for information to update in that block. That is a new feature, fairly new. Um, there are a couple case studies that are going around that, um, but nothing that I think really is attributable, att nothing that we as creatives can really look at right now is like a legitimate use case. Um, let's see. Michael, uh, uh... Uh, yeah. Colmera had a, a question about, uh, I'm sorry, not, I'm, I'm mixing up Mirna uh, and Michael, but his question was, he, he represents a artist foundry and wants to start uh, offering that as a service. How do they start? My answer in the QA uh, section was to, uh, to start, to start, to make it an offering 
start a community, start onboarding people, music.com and the system that those are great models. So you have to start the conversation with them and educate yourself and educate the people around you, you know, teach, learn, learn, teach, uh, because it's also new that, you know, for us, it's been a journey of we dived in and now we're in it, right? Because we've been doing it for, for some time now. Um, so if you want to start, you got to make the commitment and start you want to add anything to that, Kenny? Yeah, no, no, I think that's, you're absolutely right. Um, it's the first step, right? Like, how do you become a great basketball player? Will you start by dribbling a basketball and shooting it around? Yes, it's going to be awkward and funky at first. And that's sort of the cost of admission is to go through that awkward stage and to, to have the courage to say, hey, I'm a beginner in this space and I'm learning. Uh, this space moves so incredibly fast. Um, you know, you kind of just have to get comfortable with the flow of the information. Um, you have to start building the relationship in communities um, and, and really start diving into places where uh, you can learn from the individuals around you. Um, on the strategy side, um, there are communities like the CPG group, uh, Consumer Packaged Goods. They have a DAO. Um, they have a Discord. That's a great place to start. Um, bankless as well um, for designers and creatives that are on that professional side we have the system and we have our discord where we share and have these kinds of conversations and for mirna the the uh you can send your customer the illustration just included in the in the mint uh mm -hmm. description which becomes the smart contract in exchange for x you get you know the nft and then you and the nft becomes a certificate and then i'll send you yeah good old you know mail of some sort uh the actual um piece if you want to sell uh, what keone calls what, what's called digital physical and digital uh michael but uh feel free to ping me um and i'm really interested in talking about uh your art foundry there is a art <laughs> um there's are they yeah they're a gallery you know right around the corner um that i'm actually going to be hanging out with tonight and i'm going to be talking a lot about uh what that space looks like for uh what the nft space looks like for um major artists professional fine artists you know um tools that they can do to get involved um how they can start bridging that gap between physical and digital digital right um, being able to sell a physical piece, maybe alongside a digital counterpart. So, um, yeah, guys, you know, tons of questions and really happy to answer them. Um, we don't have time to get to all of them. So ping me. I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm in the discords. You know, I'm happy to answer these questions. Um, but let's recap. So uh, NFTs, what are they? non-fungible, one-of-a-kind digital assets that are stored on the blockchain. Uh, for artists, what does that mean? It means you can use them to fund tours, equipment, studio time, um, to provide really unique access to your shows um, and experiences, um, to sell all of the adjacent art that you use and that you uh, create in those creative experiences. Um, you can use them to collaborate with artists in an equitable way hey, we're in a partnership and this percentage will always stay the same regardless of where the art does or how much that it sells. Um, use it to fund equipment purchases, buy that new camera, uh, you know, buy that tour bus, um, and then, you know, host the private listening experiences. Uh, and for fans, you know, it's, it's just on the opposite side of that. Uh, next page, Jose. So you can invest now in the artists, right? Much like VCs would invest in companies. And when the company value went up, the VCs value went up. This is the same principle as an artist, especially early adopters, right? Uh, the value of your art will appreciate as the value of the artist's activities and their expressions grow. And you are literally investing in their creative careers. Um, be on the guest list for life, build these relationships and be able to Understand that this relationship isn't mitigated by a YouTube. It isn't mitigated by a Twitter. That relationship is direct with the artist or the creative that you're a fan of. 
um, access to all of the really interesting artwork beyond just the music or beyond just the photography or beyond the sculpture or beyond the fine art, right? You have this opportunity to create these really unique, um, you know, experiences that can be translated through NFTs. Um, special access to the artists. Um, and this is key, right? The ability to have these powerful relationships, right? Uh, fans have always been part and parcel of the creative um, and their supporters. <coughs> now, Gesundheit, now you have those things. Um, collaborate with artists. Um, this is one of the, um, one of my favorite uh, utilities that I see coming out of the NFT space for creatives. And that is the fans have the ability to co-create. So musicians are saying like, hey, you know, we've got these 15 songs for my fans that owned all of my previous work. Which ones do you think is most important? Right? Rappers, you know, that are in the space are like, hey, what should I be talking about in my next song? And you, as a holder of one of those NV NFTs, have the opportunity to influence the direction behind that creative. Very, very powerful stuff. Um, and then lastly, you know, the ability to join private listening experiences. Um, so the you can dive in to, you know, behind the scenes or live studio sessions. Um, I've seen photographers do uh, locations hunting together with some of their fans um, or going off and showing them, you know, how they use their cameras. There are all kinds of really unique ways to, to experience what's happening. So yeah, again, right? My name is Keone, I'm happy to be here. I run the NFT lab. Um, we've got a cohort that's kicking off on the 26th. Um, you know, I'd love for you to join me if you're really interested in uh, kicking off your journey. Um, we have builders, operators, and creatives. So we have everything from, you know, uh, publicly traded uh, gaming executives in the community to Emmy winning creatives to some of your favorite creative directors and some of your favorite YouTube channels. Um, Can you tell the story of your dinner last night? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, we have a friend of mine, Kimberly Dillon. Um, she's actually on the page and I feature her. Uh, she made her first sale um, and flipped her first NFT. Um, and she flipped it for two ETH, which is about $6,000. Um, so being able to go through uh, the experience and understand uh, how an NFT operates and being able to understand the value, um, being able to get involved in the communities um, and then figure out what NFTs that she was interested in. You know, now that's an investor side of things, um, but there are other opportunities. Um, for example, if we scroll up Bob Boniel, um, who I mentioned earlier, uh, he started a Web3 agency and he's taking on work in the space. Um, Ryan Summers is creative director for School of Motion. So if you're a graphic designer, if you're in the motion design, uh, you have absolutely seen his work. Uh, he launched a collection and sold out of a collection. Um, and then on the executive side, um, you know, David Pascal, he's, he's an operator and he's in the space where he's leading a publicly traded gaming company. And he's understanding like what is happening in the space. Um, and for him, it's allowing for him to now steward the direction of his company in a new way. Now, uh, just to be clear, right? Not everybody is in these spaces or has those um, particular jobs. So everyone's experience is going to be unique. Um, but I can pretty much guarantee stepping out of this space, you'll have a really strong foundation of NFTs and how to engage. All righty. So, um, that was a lot for today, and it would really mean a lot to me if you guys took the time to fill out this survey um, and just let us know, you know, how this session went for you guys. Um, you know, this is hosted for music.com and, you know, they uh, are building a community of creatives yeah. that are exploring NFTs. Um, jo join the Discord and the survey yeah. would be awesome just to, uh, if everyone who's here right now can click on the link that Patricia just uh, clicked, then we can get like a good sense of who's here, who attended, who's in music, who's in design, etc. That'd be really awesome. Uh, thank you, Christina. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, and the, the Discord, and uh, I'm going to take a moment here as we wrap up. First of all, 
big ups and let's do it in the chat to Keone for not only hosting today, but for the NFT lab and onboarding our communities onto Web3. Uh, the, here's the crew hosted by Keone. This is like the NPR credits at the end of a show. Today's show is hosted by Keone Chang, executive producer, Jose Caballero. Producers, Patricia Malitsky. On drums, Morgan, Cheese Montgomery. Thank you, Cheese. On turntables, Chad Tursky. On socials, Rosie Sanchez. On Moog, Josh Juice. On bass, Billy Dutton. Uh, designed by Cult Cat, Mauro Medino and the system crew. WTF producers, Jersey Carranza and Keone Chong. Go to market strategy, Mary Gerben and Monique Mayon. Product, Barrett Morris, credit director. Creative director, Chris Bannon, Bounties, Tony Wong, staging, Robbie Wells community Woody and most importantly the support pets Facundo, June, Archie, Ophelia, Elliot, Olivia, Ricky, Annie and Meredith and Clam Chowder uh, which is Cheese's cat so yeah this is presented by music.com in partnership with the system let's do the upload hi right, guys so um the upload is you know really the takeaway um what would be really awesome to hear is, you know, what was the one thing that you could take away from today's conversation uh, that you can share? Um, you know, that you can say, hey, you know, I learned this about NFTs and maybe this is why we should be paying attention, right? Um, hopefully I was able to inspire you to explore uh, the NFT space. Um, there is opportunity for everyone in this space, no matter what you do, what you're offering it is, what your product is. Um, NFTs are going to fundamentally change uh, all of our digital experiences, and they are going to be the beginning of every digital experience. So um, I'm excited to help you guys get on board in this space and just explore and start building and innovating. Um, there are going to be some powerful projects that come out of just this conversation today. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Aw, thank you, Lorraine. We have the system crew, Cult Cat, and so many people uh, that have participated in making this possible. It, big ups to CalArts for lots of inspiration. How can you find me? I'm at Keone Chong at most places. Uh, shoot me a DM. Call at me. At me. At me, homie. Yeah, I would like answer. to see what people got out of got out of it other than the presentation was very uh was was nice, the design of the presentation. Mm -hmm. All in Google Slides. Yeah. I, I would say my big takeaway from today, uh, for me personally, like just listening to understanding the case studies. Uh, Latasha as an artist, uh, such an amazing inspiration. Um, and Snoop Dogg, even though he's really big, the fact that he's embraced Web3 so like just dived in and like, you know, just with fun and like without taking it too seriously, just gives a, a big insight into it. Um, but yeah, uh, just really inspired by the case studies. You know, one of the things that I really appreciate about Snoop Dogg and his approach is he's doing community first, right? So he's entering into these communities and he's being involved. He's buying art, he's buying music, right? He's supporting the artists in these space. And then he's using himself as a platform, right? Uh, this, uh, that drop that he did for 420, it featured two people that I personally know on it, you know, like how how often can anybody say that around a huge artist at that caliber? You know, very few. And for him, he understands that it's through the participation, it's through the community and the co-creation that the opportunities happen. Um, you know, and this is why we're here. You know, we're here to help you guys co-create and, and find a path for yourselves. Any other uploads, calling once, calling twice? We have three minutes to land it yeah. on time, but we can go over a little bit and have the after party. What did people get out of today? Yeah, if you registered, an email will go out with the uh, recording and we'll have it on socials too.
but most actually the discord is the best place to catch the recording too probably post it on my twitter thread too so you guys can catch that then nobody else no other uploads one word uploads what did you get out of today just one word and i mm. will say mm. hope i love that take it away county uh for me it's humility right i i'm i'm very humbled to be in this space and to be able to share with you guys and create these opportunities so um i'm i'm humbled read, read them out yeah we've got uh, opportunity, community, inspiration, uh, support pets, flexibility, awesome, love and belonging, brotherhood, aspiration, wonderful. NFTs can create virtual stars. You're already a virtual star. You just have to create the NFTs. Uh, movement in progress, uh, more experience and more bold to grow together, facts, motivation, Beautiful. And let's leave it on that note. Motivation. I hope this was motivating you guys to get involved. Uh, thank you guys. We are the system. And keep it real, y'all. All right, y'all. Peace. Catch you next episode. Next epic. Next episode. Look at that. It's been a long morning. Love y'all. Peace, y'all. Alessandro. What uh, what link do you need? Hmm. Oh, he got it. He got it. Beautiful. All righty. Thank you, Keone. Thank you, everybody who helped produce this. The music.com team. Uh, reach out to Cheese on the Discord if you're a musician. And let's get some collaboration going between uh, our two communities. You know, the, the, the objective is to continue education uh, as we've been doing and now with music.com and mixing it up between our communities and music.com's community. The remix, the great remix is what it's all about. Just empower all artists. Good Thursday.